Okay, gang, it is time to move on to our next topic, which is all about waves. Now, this first one is mostly going to be looking at some vocabulary that you're going to need. Um, hopefully, most of this is familiar, though. And uh, There will be a couple little new things that will probably make your brain hurt a little bit the first time, but as we look at them a lot, you'll be absolutely fine with them, so don't get too hung up about it. Um, okay, so first thing we need to talk about is what do I mean by a wave? Sorry about the noise. Uh, one of my chinchillas decided it's last time. Um, so, a wave is a means of transferring energy and momentum from one point to another without moving any matter between the two points. Um, so there are loads of different types of wave. Um, hopefully if I said wave, you'd come up with lots of ideas. So often things that come to mind are water waves. Those are waves. Um, they are... Mexican waves, there are hand waves, there are sound waves, there are light waves. You could do the entire of the electromagnetic spectrum because they are also waves. So there are lots and lots of waves. And they're all about moving energy and momentum. Now don't worry too much about the momentum bit. It's the energy we're mostly going to focus on. But for the definition, you do need to know it's energy and momentum that we transfer from one point to another. And normally we do it with no net movement of air. Uh, particles of, of matter. So if you think about, let's take a wave, right? It's like a hand wave, so like this. Um, let's see if I get my hand in the camera, there we go. So my hand goes from side to side, and my hand doesn't travel from me to you, but kind of the idea does. So the sort of the hello moves from my hand to you, even though my hand hasn't moved from me to you. Um, so in some senses, that kind of is just like a wave. So if you have that in your mind, that's absolutely fine. The key thing is we're not moving any particles. Um, right, so there are lots of different types of wave, so I'm just going to talk about a couple of different classifications of them. There's uh, mechanical or electromagnetic. So mechanical are where we've got particles vibrating, so kind of like my hand just was. Um, so sound waves are example of mechanical waves, because we've got air molecules, water waves, it's the water that's moving. Um, and mechanical waves mean that we have to have something there for the wave to pass through. So they have to have a substance to pass through. The alternative are electromagnetic waves, which are made up of oscillating electric and magnetic fields, something that won't mean a lot of you, a lot to you until next year when we actually study electric and magnetic fields. But um, for the time being, you just need to know that they're electromagnetic waves. And the way they're different to mechanical waves is we don't need any matter, so they can travel through a vacuum which is a very good thing, otherwise the heat and light from the sun would never be able to reach us. So, first option when you look at wave is either it's electromagnetic or it's mechanical. Next thing is it's either progressive or it's stationary. So progressive waves are waves where there is a net transfer of energy and momentum from one point to another. So, um, me speaking now, the sound is, the energy is going from my mouth, to the uh, microphone, which is then picking it up, and it's going from the microphone, uh, the speaker at your end to your ears. Um, so there is transfer, the energy is going from one place to another. In a stationary wave, there is no net transfer of energy and momentum. Um, so the wave itself is not causing um, anything to be moved. So, for instance, uh, the wave on a guitar string is what we might call a stationary wave. It, the wave itself just travels backwards and forwards up and down that string. So in the net, there is no transfer of uh, energy and momentum. So mechanical or electromagnetic, progressive or stationary, and the last the option is longitudinal or transverse. So longitudinal waves are waves where the direction of movement of the wave is parallel to the direction of vibration. So the easiest way, I think, to show that is with the diagram. And you can do this in the exam. You can just draw a little sketch like this that explains what's happening. So we've got the wave going this way, and the vibrations are parallel to it. Um, an example, because you always need to be able to give examples for each of these, is sound waves. And it's really important that you remember that sound waves are longitudinal, because often when they ask you about the movement of particles, um, particularly if it's a sound wave, then they're trying to get you to show that you know that it is a longitudinal wave. So always try and bear that in mind. If the question ever has anything to do with sound, keep your eye out for a sneaky way they could be asking you to show that you know it's longitudinal. Okay? 
Next up, we've got uh, transverse waves. The difference here is that the vibrations are perpendicular to the direction of travel of the wave. So again, my little arrows here just make it quite clear. So I've got my wave travelling this way, and the vibrations are perpendicular to it. Um, the example for transverse waves are many. So water waves are transverse, as are all of the electromagnetic waves. So we just pick an EM wave. So light, uh, infrared, gamma, all of them are transverse. And the other thing to remember about transverse waves is that only transverse waves undergo polarisation. We'll talk about polarisation later. I just wanted to pop it into your brains right now. So it's just a special feature of transverse waves. You can test if a wave is transverse by seeing if I can polarise it or not. So now we need to talk about the way that we um, display waves, and the way we show what's going on and the language that we use to do that as well. Now, all waves we will show it by drawing like this, even the uh, longitudinal ones, um, it's just easier. So don't stress that if you see a waveform like this, that it has to be a transverse wave, because that is not true. So some words we need to know. So displacement, when we're talking about it in terms of waves, we're talking about how far away it is from the equilibrium point. It's just a bit more specific when we're talking about it in terms of a wave rather than just general displacement. Um, amplitude then, which I'm sure you're all quite happy barking on one of these waveforms, that is uh, defined as the maximum displacement of an oscillating particle. So this point here, it's displaced, but it's not displaced the maximum. So I wouldn't call this its amplitude at any point. Its amplitude is only when it's at its maximum displacement. Okay. Um, and you could say that it's equal to the height of a peak or the depth of a trough. So, phase. This is a term we're going to start using, and it's just a way of talking about where in the cycle a particle is. Um, we tend to talk about it being particles because we're mostly going to talk about sound waves, but you could talk about it as being um, the with an EM wave as well. We'll still talk about phase, so don't get too hung up on the fact that I'm using the word particle. It's just easier for you to get your head around. Um, so phase is the point where the uh, particle is in the oscillation. So if you think about each individual particle in a wave, so if we think sound wave, um, they each get vibrated up and down and then go back to the centre. And when we take a snapshot and make that waveform, it's um, showing where all those little individual particles are along the way. Um, so for each one, I can talk about just thinking about where it is in its up and down motion. So it could be at the top or it could be at the bottom. Um, and those would be different points in its phase. And the one next to it will be at a slightly different point, and the one next to it will be at a slightly different point as well, um, which is how we get our wave. So we often tend to talk about phase in terms of degrees, and this particularly makes sense because we like to compare two particles. So I might have a particle here and a particle here, and then I want to go, right, how far out of sync are they? Um, and I do it in a number of degrees. So zero would mean that they were in sync, um, 180 would be that they were completely out of phase, they were doing completely different things to each other. Um, I'll just skip to the next one where I've actually said this. So um, if you think of um, 360 as being all the full range of options, so zero and 360 mean that it's doing the same thing. Um, 180 is the furthest point you could possibly be away. If it's about a quarter of a cycle out, then it would be 90 degrees out of phase. We're going to do a lot of these examples. Um, and it's just about comparing how far they are, out they are. So if you think about the waveform, the, we're mostly going to look at them being in phase, 90 degrees out of phase, 180 degrees out of phase, and maybe 270 out of phase, but that's kind of the same as 90 anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. Um, but we'll have a look at a few of these as well. We might do 45 as well. Um, it's, it's generally pretty easy. Um, I'm just going to put that idea in your mind, but we're going to practice it in class a lot so that you can see how easy it really is. But I hope you got the idea for the moment. Right, moving on to something we're slightly happier with that I'm going to make you unhappy with. Um, so, wavelengths. Um, it's the distance between two consecutive particles at the same phase. That is the correct definition. If you tell me it's the distance between two peaks, I'm going to get cross with you. Because, yes, this is the distance between two peaks, but this is also the distance between two peaks. And that one is twice as big. So how do I know which one you really meant? 
Now, if you said it's at the distance between two consecutive peaks, that would be acceptable and would probably be okay in the exam. But if you don't have the word consecutive in there, then you are giving a pretty much infinite range of answers, which is not a good shout in the physics exam, so it's not like you to give us one definitive answer. Um, the idea of it being from one peak to the next peak is an example of an amplitude, but I could measure it from, uh, sorry, for the wavelength, but I could measure it from anywhere. It doesn't have to be the peak. I could measure from here to here, and that would still be a wavelength. I could measure from here to here, and that would still be a wavelength. And with this definition, it means that I could measure it anywhere. It's just specific without being a generalised example, without it being an example. So it's it's correct all the time. In every situation, that definition is correct. Um, so it's just something to bear in mind. But make sure you have the word consecutive in there. Okay, um, and wavelength is measured in metres, which I assume we knew anyway, but I've obviously put it in there because someone's forgotten at some point. Okay, next thing we need to talk about is time period. Um, that's the time it takes for one complete oscillation of a particle in a wave. So time it takes for particles to go up, down, back to the middle. And that's the measure. is uh, frequency, and that is equal to the number of complete oscillations completed in one second by a particle in the wave. So how many times in one second does the particle do a full oscillation? Um, that's measured in hertz. That's its SI unit. Its base unit would be seconds to the minus one. Now, if you note, I said that the unit for time period is seconds, and the unit for hertz, for frequency, is really seconds to the minus one. So what that means is that these two things are going to be related, frequency and time period. And they are, in fact, the inverse of each other. So what that means is that frequency is equal to 1 over the time period. And therefore, time period is also equal to 1 over the frequency. Often they'll give you 1 when you need the other, so you then have to go work it out. OK, last little bit on our intro to waves is the wave equation, which you should have already met. And for all waves, we can say that speed equals the frequency times the wavelength. So that's C equals F lambda. Sometimes the C will be shown as a V, but C in this instance just means wave speed. Now, often C is used as shorthand for um, the speed of light, so the speed of all electromagnetic waves. But um, originally it just meant wave speed. It's just been so often that it was uh, speed of light that it's used for that now. So you may see C equals F lambda, or you may see V equals F lambda, but they're the same thing. And by context, you should know what it's talking about. So um, everything is just in the SI base unit, so it's all pretty straightforward. And that is about it for this one. Um, we will continue with waves. We will get our head around that strange phase stuff in class with lots of examples that will make it suddenly click. It's just keeping it there will be the challenge. And I will see you in class to do that then. Okay. In seconds.